A crystal hamburger. It's different. Before Samuel L. Jackson was one of the highest grossing movie stars of all time, appearing in Do the Right Thing, Jungle Fever, Goodfellas, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Incredibles, True Romance, Django Unchained, Jackie Brown, The Avengers, Snakes on a Plane, Deep Blue Sea, and of course... Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? Before Sam amassed a social media following that included 4.5 million on Instagram and 7.75 million on Twitter. Before Sam's Jules character coached his own hockey team. Well, why are you skating for me like that? Huh? Well, he was more than just a coach. Uh, he was really a teacher. Before Sam was narrating children's books in his signature style. How come you can do all this other great shit, but you can't lie to f*** down and sleep. Before Sam Jackson was starring alongside old Hollywood pal Bruce Willis and James McAvoy in Glass, the long-awaited follow-up to Unbreakable. I hope for your sake that he likes you. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. Samuel Jackson, he grew up around discrimination, a native of Tennessee during the Jim Crow era. Now, he had experienced racism his entire life. He even attended segregated schools. So when the civil rights movement hit the 1960s, well, he knew he had to do his part. While attending Morehouse College in Atlanta, he decided to indulge in his favorite childhood pastime, going to the movies. Now, during a screening of John Goldfarb, Please Come Home, well, a distraught man ran in and announced that Martin Luther King had been murdered. The theater clearing out, he returned to the Morehouse campus to find many of his friends and classmates were burning down the neighborhood. Just four days after MLK's assassination in Memphis, Willie flew back to his home state to participate in the garbage worker strike that King had been leading up until his death. He then flew back to Atlanta to participate as an usher in his funeral. At 70 years old, Sam Jackson is one of the most prolific actors in Hollywood. While going through his filmography and research for this video, we didn't realize just how many flicks he's acting. Actually in. The guys had memorable bit roles such as Senior Love Daddy in Do the Right Thing, Stack Edwards in Goodfellas, and the chain smoking Mr. Arnold in Jurassic Park. You also can't forget his career defining role as Nick Fury in the MCU or Jules Winfield in Pulp Fiction, for which he received an Oscar nom. There's no doubt that Sam has contributed to some of the defining movies of the last 30 years, but as it goes with most actors, well, his early life, it was actually quite troubled. A youth that involved a speech impediment as well as a drug addiction. Yeah, we're just getting started. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael McCrudden, documenting the life and career of Samuel L. Jackson prior to fame. Here for you, of course, on Before They're Famous. Now, we've done plenty of other bios on actors here on this channel. Coming off the top of my head, I know we did Jack Black, Josh Brolin, and Paul Rudd but we've done a bunch. We have an entire playlist you can check out. Also, as always, let us know who's next in the comments down below. Now let's get into Samuel L. Jackson here before they're famous. It's a long one. It's pretty much an epic. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Now run and don't look back. Run! Don't look back! Samuel Leroy Jackson was born on December 21st, 1948 in Washington, D.C. to parents Elizabeth and Roy. At a young age, his parents split up with his father moving to Kansas City and his mother sending Sam to live with his grandparents in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Sam's grandmother worked as a housekeeper while his grandfather was employed at a hotel as well as a cleaning company. Now, Sam states that he only met his father twice as a young kid and he later died from alcoholism. Now, also living under the roof was Sam's aunt, Etna, a school teacher who wanted to instill in her nephew a sense of knowledge and wisdom. She uh, forced me to do a lot of things that I didn't want to do when I was a kid, but one of the things she made me do was read, so I was reading by the time I was like two. And it would show Sam tough love. Teaching him in the fourth grade, she would often make Sam answer tough questions that the other students didn't know the answer to. Now this caused problems in the schoolyard as children accused Sam of being smarter than others. Despite coming from a broken home, Samuel was surrounded by love. Growing up an only child on Lookout Street, he would receive constant visits from family members in the area and was always welcome at their home. Growing up with Sam, it was like, he was like another brother because he was always at our house, laying around in the refrigerator. 
things like that. Sam was described as having a great sense of humor as well as being fun to be around. Now he was also known to be quite adventurous. He once jumped off a bridge into the Tennessee River behind Chattanooga's Hunter Museum of Art and he swam out to a nearby island. But not everything was peachy. Now, Sammy had many challenges to overcome, the most glaring of which was the racism he was subjected to as a young child in the segregated South. He remembers seeing white-only signs around his town as a child. Now, school children, they would often shout out the N-word at him as they passed by on the bus. After school, he would often travel with his grandfather to clean offices around town. While his grandfather worked away, young Sam, he would often strike conversations with some of the white business men employed at these offices. Now he recalls his grandfather, who was 70 years old at the time, being worried that Samuel was possibly eyeballing them. Now Samuel developed a particularly close relationship with his grandfather and has referred to him as his best friend. To distract him from the brutal realities of the segregated South, well Sam would spend much of his time at the movies. Since even the movie theaters were segregated, well there were only two in Chattanooga that he was allowed to go to. Now these were the Liberty Theater and Grand Theater, both located on East 3rd Street. Samuel spent hours upon hours indulging in the Hollywood classics of that period. He and his mom would be there sometimes from the early morning until 4 p.m. While Sam would be known for playing badass characters with killer attitude, he recalls his favorite films as a kid being creature features. He adored the genre. In fact, the reason behind wanting to do Deep Blue Sea was the desire to be killed by a monster with big sharp teeth. He stated, I watched Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, The Thing. It came from outer space, all this other stuff. And the opportunity for me to run from something that's bigger than I am, faster than I am, that has big teeth and might kill me was the kind of movie that I wanted to do. So I did Deep Blue Sea and I got killed and it was very cool. The movie theater was somewhat of a haven for him. That one of his fondest memories was attending Children's Day on Saturday morning at the Liberty Theater where he could get a giant bags of Lay's potato chips for just a nickel. They would also have contests auctioning off radios and cameras with the chips and Sam, he would beg his mom for money so he could buy as many bags as he could. Now Sam was known for being a good student, a strong supporter of American public education system. Well in 2016 he tweeted, I'm a proud product of public education. I'm so honored to sponsor schools in Chattanooga on best school day. Attending East 5th Street School and later Riverside High, well one of his teachers said that Sam would always go above and beyond in the classroom. She described a story where he received his report card and seeing that he flunked science while well, he was prepared to to march down the hall to give his science teacher a piece of his mind. Now she recalls holding him back. This particular teacher also went on to say she certainly didn't teach him to speak the way he does in many of his movies. If I looked at you and said, wow, that jacket is a yeah. Which really means yeah. it's a beautiful and yeah. extraordinary jacket. Right. On that topic, we gotta bring up Sam's love of saying the word mother her. Now, the actor, he became practically synonymous with the term. What many fans may not realize is that using it helps the actor overcome a terrible stutter that he's had since childhood. He admitted that kids in his neighborhood teased him so badly that at one point, well, he stopped speaking for almost a year. You know, kids made fun of me and they laughed at me and they ridiculed me in a different kind of way. The bullying also resulted in fights, many of which he won. Now, in order to cope, Sam would spend time at the library consuming as much reading material as he could. While he did his best to combat the affliction, he says that mother it simply flicks some kind of switch that eliminates his stutter while on camera. Yeah, go, go figure. The arts just seem to be in Sam's blood. As a youth, he would play the trumpet and the French horn. Now, looking back on his childhood, he stated, Essentially, my job was to go to school and bring home good grades. I was on the honor roll, I swam, I ran, and I did my homework. I didn't stay out late. I was concerned about the consequences I'd face at home than I was about the peer pressure. I was not gonna put my family in the position where they might wish I wasn't their child. Those people fed, clothed, and loved me. They had high expectations that I would go to college. Graduating high school, Sam did just that. He decided to attend the historically black Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, where he would pursue marine biology. He decided to switch his major after joining an acting class. During this time, the civil rights movement was at its height. 
Now, after participating in Martin Luther King's funeral in 68, well, Sam decided to devote his time and resources to more urgent matters. A group of students locked faculty members in an office on the Morehouse campus where they were to be held until the school's curriculum was switched. Among the group held captive, apparently, was Martin Luther King Sr. Now, the faculty was held for over 48 hours while an agreement had been made. Jackson, he was expelled. He soon joined Atlanta's Black Power Movement, which according to Sam, was becoming increasingly more radical. Bent on changing the system by any means necessary, the group anticipated violence and decided to arm themselves. However, Sam's mom, she interjected with some news. As it turns out, the FBI had visited her at home, warning that if her son did not leave Georgia, well, he would most likely be dead within a year. She begged Sam to leave to LA, where he could pursue acting. Now on the coast, Sam Sam, well, he had an opportunity to shine on the stage. To make ends meet, he would work in social services. In 1971, he applied to go back to Morehouse in order to finish his course. He did so graduating in 1972. That same year, he made his film debut in an 84-minute black exploitation film titled Together for Days, a film Jackson was seemingly embarrassed by. Instead of heading back west, the actor thought he'd try his chances up in the Big Apple. He and his girlfriend, Latanya, they were working as part of a regional theater and thought New York was the next best move. This was around 1976. Latanya and Sam, they got hitched in 1980, and two years later, their daughter, Zoe, was born. Now, Sam, he found steady work in the New York stage scene, and he also was cast in several films along the way. This included an armed robber in Eddie Murphy's 1988 comedy, Coming to America, and a senior love Daddy and Spike Lee's racial drama, Do the Right Thing. Both are, well, considered classics. This is Mr. Senior Love Daddy, your voice of choice. The world's only 12-hour strong man on the air. But turmoil would soon hit the Jackson family in the form of Sam's drug addiction. Now, living through the 60s, the actor had smoked his fair share of weed. He even tried LSD a few times. But Sam's heroin habit was nothing like he had ever dealt with before. Now, after overdosing one too many times, he switched to crack cocaine in 1990. And this was right around the same time he appeared as Stax in Goodfellas. Sam admitted that drugs helped him while he was on stage, and they never got through a single performance without being high. He stated, I had a very good theater reputation. Granted, I was a drug addict and I was out of my mind a lot of the time, but I had a good reputation. Showed up on time, knew my lines, hit my marks. I just wasn't making a lot of money but I was satisfied artistically. But eventually, Sam, he would have to change his ways. The last straw, it happened in 1991, when his daughter Zoe discovered him passed out in the kitchen surrounded by drug paraphernalia. From there on out, well, he got clean. In 1993, he was part of the box office smash hit, which was Jurassic Park, where he played the role of chain-smoking Mr. Arnold. Hold on to your butts. Another film in 1993 that he appeared in, which over time has become a cult classic, is True Romance. Now, the screenwriter for that film was looking for an actor to play the role of a gangster named Jules in an upcoming indie film that was being directed. Based on Sam's brief performance as Big Don in True Romance, well, the writer thought he'd be a fantastic pick for the film, and that director was Quentin Tarantino, and that film, it was Pulp Fiction. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Pulp Fiction hit the world like a pop culture tornado, with Sam Jackson drawing particular acclaim in the role of Jules Winfield. Now, the performance earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, which was unfortunately lost to Martin Lando in Ed Wood. I don't know. Now, either way, the role had put Sam on Hollywood's radar. During his daughter's college commencement speech years later, well, he stated, I think I made my family proud. My wife says I finally grow into the man she always knew I was going to be. As for the rest of the story, well, I think we're going to wrap this one up here, of course, because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden, and we make tons of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. And uh, every once in a while, we'll put together one on an actor. They don't perform as well as we would hope, but us around the office, these are some of the videos we really enjoy making. Plus, the man's an absolute legend. If you're gonna go to the movies, you should know where he came from. Anyways, as always, let us know who's next in the comments down below. We'll be sure to get to work on that, and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!